Shabbat Shalom. In this week's Parsha, Yitro, God has led the Israelites out of Egypt, appearing to them as a cloud by day and a fire by night. Two months after their departure, they enter the wilderness of Sinai and camp there. God calls to Moses and gives him a message for the children of Israel. Atem rehitem asher asiti lamitraim. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians. Va esa echem al kampe nesharim. How I carried you on eagles' wings. To be carried on the wings of an eagle, the most beautiful and evocative image in the Parsha to me. This majestic bird has strong wings that offer safety and protection. It has been said that it has been said by some commentators that unlike other birds that carry their young in their claws, the eagle carries her young on her back. Can you imagine soaring through the air on an eagle's back? <laughs> This passage brought me back to my childhood and memories of being carried by my father. I have a vivid image of being in the ocean with him, waiting for the waves to rush in. As they did, my father would pick me up and hold me just high enough so that I'd get splashed with my head remaining above water and there was no chance of being swept away while my father was holding me. The other image is more somber. It is of my father carrying me from the car to our apartment after I had my tonsils removed. <laughs> I remember lying on a table in the doctor's office and feeling very scared when he gave me ether. The next thing I recall is feeling very safe and protected in my father's arms. The children of Israel were exactly that, children. They were just coming out of slavery where free will did not exist for them. They had no experience in making choices or arriving at decisions. So when God told them through Moses that they would become his treasured people if they agreed to obey his commands. They readily agreed without even knowing what those commands were. After all, they had been following commands from other masters for 200 years. God was clear and specific when he did give his commandments. Thou shalt not kill, honor thy father and thy mother. A roadmap that God's children could follow to understand how to be good. As a child, it was relatively easy to understand the concept of being good, and it wasn't all that difficult to comply, at least in hindsight. When my mother told me to be a good girl, it meant obeying her and my father. I would be a good student by respecting my teachers and doing my homework, and I would be a good friend by being kind and unselfish. Once you enter adulthood, things become more complicated. There are bosses who are unfair or dishonest and friends who are disloyal. How do you remain godly when the world around you can be so ungodly? One of my favorite Psalms, Psalm 15 asks, Lord, who may sojourn in your tent? Who may dwell? on your holy mountain? The psalmist's answer is, he who lives without blame. Well, that bar is set mighty high. <laughs> who do you know who lives without blame? In my own song that I wrote in Rabbi Kleinbaum's class, I told Adonai that I longed to sojourn in his tent, top the mountain, but wondered if I was welcome, not being blameless. I concluded that because his tent was open on all sides, I could stumble in. 
The most beautiful words about being good that I have ever read were written by Mary Oliver in Wild Geese. It begins, you do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert, repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. And it concludes, whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over, announcing your place in the family of things. So, how do we listen to our hearts and discover who we are? How we can make this broken world a holier place? How do we find our personal Torah? For the last year and a half, I thought that becoming a bar mitzvah would answer these questions. <laughs> that today would be the culmination of my journey as I enter the promised land. I know now that this is my Mount Sinai, only the beginning of a new and more wondrous journey. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat.